Listen up, cluckheads. You're listening to Whiskey and Wine with Rooster and the Madman, where we talk about common sense, current events, the Constitution, and morals. Morals. While comparing drinks of yesteryear to drinks of today. So sit back, relax, leave us a comment. Here comes Whiskey and Wine. Yeah, I mean, and with all the politics and everything going on right now, it just kind of makes me wonder: um, Do the Clintons' Christmas lights hang themselves, or <laughs> <laughs> do they have like a guy on retainer for hanging things? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, the turkey is not the only thing that's going to be stuffed at Mr. Pelosi's house and Kamala Harris's. <laughs> hey, you're you're recording on already. Oh yeah, did you know that? Uh, no. Uh, welcome yeah. back, okay, it's, and, uh, uh, <laughs> and we have we have Jizzo sitting in for yeah. uh, for the morals. Yeah. yeah so uh, thanks, Jizzo. I, I think that he might have like a little bit of a more lax because I think I think that that probably would have gotten at least a yellow card. I, I have yeah. really large shoes to fill. Yeah, and you know you're you're, you're going to get beat yeah. severely if you don't do it right. <laughs> I mean, these four inch stilettos are ridiculously <laughs> giant, but they do match your belt yeah, and your yeah. eyes. They do. Yeah, I mean, you're wearing her clothes very well. <laughs> Welcome back, cluckheads. <laughs> I already said that. <laughs> Stop trying to steal it. <laughs> We're on to one. We're, so, on, to one. We're yeah. on that. Well, you know who we are. You know what yeah, we do. do. Uh, Constitution. Common sense and current events and yeah. morals. Chizzo. Chizzo. <laughs> so. It's me. It's me. <laughs> so. Um, seriously, who hangs the Clinton slot? I, you know, come to think of it, I didn't even. I bet you they just come. I, I bet you just, just come home over. and all the lights are just hanging around. The I didn't, I didn't move your mic over. You might actually have to try to. Oh, I like the lean. Oh, you do. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's feels sweet. very morals-y. Well, there you go, man. You know, as long as you feel morals-y, that's, that's that's. I know the, that we didn't uh, get to complete all of our uh, Clucktober. But no, life do, happens. You know, yeah, we had a happen. good time though, so we still managed to pull off second annual Clucktoberfest. So. Yeah, but do you know what today is? That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know what today is? Oh, yes, the Marine. It's the Corps Marine birthday. Corps birthday. Simplify there, Devil Dog. Yeah. I sound like I'm not super excited about it because uh, I wasn't in the Marine Corps, but I know how the Marines love to celebrate their birthday. It is a national freaking holiday, baby. Yeah, in the Army, when they come around and you're you're actually on duty and they're like, hey, it's Sarge's birthday, you're like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Sarge, what are we doing today for, for Army's birthday? Well, you, you, you got go PT. Check, yeah, you go check some weapons out and clean them. That's what you can do, dirtbag. <laughs> <clears throat> and, uh, you know... We're we're running around, you know, like in the ranger panties, like shooting oh, stuff yeah. off like, yeah. in the air and oh, your little running panties you guys like to wear. Yeah. And, yeah. So but you no, know, it's cool that you guys you're really into it and you celebrate your birthday. You got well, a long run in history. It, we I mean we do, and you know, the fact that um the fact that it was born in a bar <laughs> <laughs> it was born in in Tun Tavern. Yeah. It, you know, it even it even adds more to that uh to, to that camaraderie and uh I, I to the day i die i will firmly believe that the united states marine corps is a part of the fabric of the of the american mythos um but you know it was 1775 so it was before the the founding of the of the actual constitution and signing and all that so you know really rich history there and everything from the from the uniforms to everything else and you know yep uh, so I'm I'm excited. I'm happy for you. But you know, with that being said, y'all can't see this, but I'm I'm yeah, knife hand. Get the knife hand going. Okay. But so, with yeah. that being said, episode sixty eight. I think that we should do well, veteran whiskeys. Well, you're actually off. It's it's episode sixty nine. The sixty nine. Yeah, so it's also a cool milestone. <laughs> <laughs> we did sixty eight last last time and we owed it one <laughs> yeah so i'm sorry so this is 69 yeah 69 which is, which is even which is even which is even better considering that we're doing yeah vet, I mean, veteran whiskeys yeah so, i'm okay with this yeah it's all good it's all good and again happy birthday uh to all those devil dogs out there semper fi i know you guys like to 
to that kind of stuff. I never understood one thing about the Marine Corps, though. How come you cannot pronounce left and right when you when when you do marching cadence? You, we we can. No. Yeah. I, no. Yes. No. When I was stationed yeah. at Fort Knox, Delta Company was our Marine contingent, and uh, every time they marched by, all we ever heard was air, 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 <laughs> in a very loud uh, decibel. <laughs> that is uh, that is completely where we sit. Left, no. you left, no, you left, you, right you are, or left. You are one hundred percent incorrect. Are you sure? Yep, pretty sure. I don't know. But that being said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take this, um, um, the Lead Slingers bourbon. And now, right. with this, they're they're as far as price point goes, they're they're about the same. Yeah. So I'm going to do this uh, Lead Slingers bourbon, That's and uh, it is a product of the USA. So on the back of it, uh, it says that it is veteran owned. Uh, Les Slinger's Whiskey was founded in 2013 by seven combat veterans when USAF, TACPS, U.S. Army Rangers, Green Berets, paratroopers combined their love for America and fine whiskey. Um, Led Slinger's Whiskey Bourbon was born. Um, tired of people afraid to support the Second Amendment, the LSW team was focused on bringing a quality bourbon to uh, bourbon whiskey to freedom loving like minded individuals. Stay frosty and freedom on product of the USA. Um, yeah, so it's actually it's a product of a uh, Moore, Oklahoma. It's made up in Moore. Nice. Yeah, and this is uh, so almost it's in, local, and it's uh, it's forty eighty. Uh, I want to say it was like twenty three bucks for a seven fifty. That's so, pretty good. Not not too bad. I will say this: one of the things that I love about their back labels is that it's got a front label on the back label. So as you're drinking down, you can see yeah, the, Ameri- it's, it's, the American yeah, that's, flag that's, that's in the, in the, right in the background. There. So yeah. I like that. Um, I've never had this particular one. The one that you have, I have had in the past, and it is one of my favorites. So let's do. Let's go ahead and do the. Uh, let's go ahead and do the Uncle Joe Biden sniff test here yeah. on this one. We'll just go ahead. And Oh, that was a nice little pop. Yeah. Let's uh bottle's even got nice shoulders to touch. <laughs> Uncle Joe Biden sniff test approves. That is a good smell. Yeah. That is a good smell That's whiskey. kinda that, that that cork coming out of there kinda sounded like first base in Russian gulag. <laughs> first base in Russian gulag. <laughs> or maybe, you know, the Pelosi house whenever uh <laughs> Nancy's not home. <laughs> That's not funny. He got hurt spit on it more it sniffs out well that smells great that smells really good that smells really good so So, all right so so far these guys uh, we're going to uh, like they know what they're doing we're going to pour this in these acid etched united states marine corps eagle globe and anchor glasses that you can find at giftedchicken.com home of all your beard bath and body needs veteran owned and operated right here in north texas um and they have all the branches excluding space force yeah we'll, we'll, we'll work on that on the space force part but uh, let's uh let's do the uh, pour hearty, here you guys the, say Oorah. so let's uh get our pour here going yeah and right there and as i put my hand out hey man that's enough you know we don't need a triple here it's just the double's fine yeah we can do a triple that's no, fine no, no the double is fine i mean you already went to the triple i don't want to see what your your version of a triple is <laughs> What? No, no. So, all right. So before we're not tasting yet, we're but, not tasting but, yet. But Jizzo, I just he, sniffed it. He just sniffed. That, that's all I was. No, you weren't. Don't do. lie. Yeah, he don't was lie. sniffing Stop. it. Put it down. You could smell it put with it your tongue. Put, put it, no, no, no. Put he sniffed put it with it. his lips. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm getting in my do mustache. yours. I'm getting my mustache so I could sniff it there. Uh, so okay. So what I've got going on here is a. Uh, this one's actually pretty cool. I'm excited. I about love this the bottle, one. and I love that. Group. Yeah, this I bottle is so cool. So this is a uh, James that. E. Pepper's group 1776 uh, straight bourbon whiskey. Uh, and remember, bourbon is supposed to be out of Kentucky. That is where bourbon got its claim to fame is coming out of Kentucky. Because I used thought to, it was technically anything outside of Tennessee. Uh, no, I think it was it was Kentucky specifically. Okay. Uh, because they use a different mash or a, a, you know a different uh, grain uh, mm-hmm. that yeah. they did in the rest of it. So, um, but you know, like Scots got Scots have their whiskey. Canadians have the whiskey based on the Scott whiskey, you know, and things like that. Uh, but this one's really cool because this bottle looks like it's straight out of 1776. This looks like the stuff that they would have been, uh, you know, debating on that uh, little revolution that they were trying to do in a tavern. 
uh, kind of a deal. This ain't, so. this ain't your this ain't your grandma's tea yeah. party. But th- here's a really cool thing about this one: it's fifty percent alcohol, which is a hundred proof. Yeah, so it's fifty one hundred. Yeah, so it's it's gonna it it's gonna have some kick to it. And I like how they have the joiner die on it. Yeah, it, it's weird. They've got that extremist joiner die thing from the Revolutionary War, yeah. which is the original woodcut, which happens to match a particular arm that uh, is holding it. Yeah. Uh, right now. Uh, but here's the other really cool thing. This is the oldest bourbon in, in, in Kentucky. Yep. This is the oldest distillery in Kentucky. They were actually founded in 1780. Yeah. And, of course, their first one was their 17, old 1776. The old was, 76. Yep. That was the, was, which was theirs right there. So I like that it's the dark glass uh, reminiscent back before refrigeration and preservatives yep. and stuff like that where they just use the old dark or ceramics the amber glass, yeah, the amber yeah. glasses and the ceramics so they're still doing it. it's in the shape of the old school ones you know it looks like something you'd see you know out there on the frontier or something so but yeah. let's, anyways enough and, enough. I li- and i like the way that they use the font that oh, yeah. john hancock actually wrote yeah and it's got that green font and it's that brown and tan paper like you would have yeah. seen back there in those days kind of thing so uh, i dig it yeah all right so here we go Ooh, another my, first my, base session. My, my pop was bigger yeah yeah uh, uncle Wow. The, wow. That's, we're doing the Joe Biden sniff that's test. That's a little stronger smelling. That is definitely stronger smelling. Oh. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I'm curious at how, how the is colors it? are going to compare. How, how, do you, how do you like the smell on that one? It's got a. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it's really, really, really pleasant. The Biden, it reminds me of Copenhagen Black. Uh, I, I've never used Copenhagen never, at all. Never. Not even Copenhagen Black. So, you know, the girls at the uh, concerts back in the day used to hand it all out for uh, sample purposes. And, yes. Uh, it, it was... I remember Copenhagen It was Black. passed around a lot, and uh, now that it made me think of the... Led to that can. <clears throat> the one that I used to like, they used to have one that's, that's called that's the... Dumb, uh, by the way. Called right. the Southern Blue. <laughs> And the old Southern, they, the original Southern blend had that whiskey smell to it. The, and now, yeah. now, now they don't. All right. So I'm just looking at the color here. So it looks like the Color's about lead slinger is a little darker. Yeah. It's a little darker. Not very but not much. much. They're, they're pretty, pretty even. It's just slightly darker. Uh, but that could be the leaded, gla- you know, the, the, the leaded content in the glass that we're seeing, but I don't think there's lead is. in here. That's just a, glass quality thing i'm i don't know gotcha. I'm a glass maker so uh, i just know that certain leaded glasses are a lot harder to acid <laughs> than other ones are so uh you know all right yeah so but so i mean i'm uh, excited i wish we had a little eyes to go with it but you know let's grab our uh, usmc glasses and let's have a little cluckage clinkage going on and let's uh take a sip of this Oh, it bites. It's got a little bit. See, I think that's pleasantly smooth. It's it, it's smooth, but it's got a little bit of a bite. Oh, there's the burn. Yeah, yeah there, there it is. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's really, a delay. Yeah, it's really smooth up front, and then the delay kind of comes in with it, but that's that's good. That is a good bourbon. Right. To me, bourbons are always a little bit. They always have a little bit more bit of a burn. Su- anyway. Well, to me, they're a little bit sweeter than you, you know, the whiskeys are. To me, are. they always have like a little bit more of a sweetness on the front. Yeah. And then they burn a little bit more on the back end. Yeah. I like it. Which, you know. I typically drink whiskeys more than bourbons, but bourbons are always, you know. Can't go wrong with it, Bourbon is a type of whiskey, but, yeah. you know. Uh, but, yeah, it's always just a slight different smell, a slight different flavor than your your, your typical American whiskey. Yeah. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and get into you, – you want to you start topping number one? Or? Oh, yeah. Well, let me just go ahead and get into this All one. All right, so, so timer. Uh, you going to you gonna, you gonna go? Yeah, whenever you want. You, you, you said timer you, you like timer. you wanted us to wait. Yeah, so. Tim, the, uh, timer's ready. <clears throat> yeah, you, you tell me when to go. Just whenever you okay. want to go. And so I'm going right now. So Timer started. The elections um, started, but have not stopped, apparently. Uh, so this is the midterms. It's not the big ones where we pick, you know, <clears throat> Sleepy Joe or anybody else. Okay, or, so first really off, him, but, uh, it is like we record these on Thursdays, right? Yeah. They air on Saturday on Deep Dallas yeah, Radio. So voting was voting. Tuesday. So voting was Tuesday. Uh, and plus all the early voting. And plus all the early voting. Uh-huh. And, you know, we've become a lot more advanced since, I don't know, the Civil War. Yeah, computers and electricity and... Indoor know, plumbing. Yeah, things like that. Hygiene. Um, 
So during the Civil War, (laughs) there was there were many states that they were having to do a manual count on the votes. They did them by candlelight Uh and they had them done within a week. Yeah. So because some of these races are so close and that there's contestants and blah, 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 blah. They're saying that we might not actually get some of the official results before Christmas. Yeah. Well, I mean, President Biden did warn us before early voting or the first day of early voting, maybe it was, uh, that just because we think somebody won doesn't mean they won. Yeah. It could be days. It could be weeks. It could be months. I know. I could be pink. I could be blue. I could be violet <laughs> sky. I could be purple. I could be purple. I could be anything. Because democracy like. is being threatened yeah. with our elections, and that's what he said. Democracy was being threatened with this midterm election. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, so we got through it for the most part. Most states did their thing. The last count we that I saw it. that the GOP had forty eight seats in the Senate. The de- the Democratic Party had 46, 51 is for majority. Yeah, we're, we're th- um, three and nine off. Yeah, and then I think that I, the latest result was that in the House, that it was uh, 209 for the GOP, yeah. uh, 192 for the yes. Democrats. So what we're really waiting for is we're waiting for what it looks like with the way the votes are being leaning uh, for the ones that haven't finished is it looks like the the Republicans yeah. will take the House and the Senate, which I which but I, it's a bare Senate. They just have the majority, yeah, which doesn't get passed. And Nevada it, has, a, I think, like eighty something percent reporting. Yeah. Alaska has eighty something percent reporting. So, well, Arizona just announced they found sixty thousand more votes. Of course, they did. <laughs> uh, and they're about to vote those tonight, or about to count those yeah. tonight. Um, they um, they came in, at, you know, miraculously. Well, who knows where they came from? I mean, it, you know, could have been. My guess is it came from uh, whatever uh, Tombstone, Arizona. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from all those guys yeah, yeah, back yeah. in White Earth days that he put down. Yeah, that's they're, that's they're, weird. The they're enti- still voting Democrat. The, the, the entire Earp family. <laughs> yeah, they're still voting just, Democrat. Just, it's, it's totally voted. cool. It's cool. Uh, um, but but you know, here in the great state of Texas, yeah. well, first off, the only people that lost in the election in the state of Texas were were the Texans uh, and uh, you had and Francis. Francis you, you, O'Rourke, he we, lost. We, 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 would have, we would have lost with if Abbott would have won. We would have lost yeah. if, if Beto would have won. But, you know, I, I, I'm really just, I, I'm confused about Beto. Because, you well, know, I guess technically he's Beto in three now. You kind of almost have to pick, and I'm just winging this. We didn't prepare this part. You almost have to kind of pick when you, when you go into picking for governor this time was you got Greg, you got Governor Greg Abbott. And that is the, do I want you to hit me the, in the hand with a hammer? Or you got Francis O'Rourke, known as Beto. And it's like, would you like to kick me in the balls? <laughs> with a steel toe. <laughs> with a steel toe boot in that situation. So, I mean, well, I, I'm taking the hammer, dude. I'm not taking it to the, and, the cojones oh, on and, that and one. And did you, see the, uh, did you see how long Beto has actually been on the campaign trail? Dude, that guy's a beast when it comes to campaign. I, I think he's trying to go for the record. Uh, 11, one, one, seven, five. So 1175 days out of the past 2000 and something 2048. Yeah. He has been campaigning for a major elected office now. So the last three, so that's now 365. Yeah. Time basically times four. Yeah. So, but I mean, you know, he's a busy guy. So he tried to get the uh, Senate seat here. I guess that didn't that didn't work. Uh, but it was close. It just then didn't we, work. And then we tried to do the. And then he president. decided to be president. Hell yeah, I'm going to take your AR 15s and your AK 47s. That didn't work. Yeah. Uh, and then he said, I'm going to be governor of the state of Texas. Uh, and he's going to get rid of those AR 15s because they're just weapons of war and death machines. Look here, mother clucker. <laughs> and then that. Uh, yeah. That, and uh, yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. Timer just went off. Timer just uh, went off. I did hear these change the spelling of Beto to. Change the O on the end to E A U X. E A U X. And he's, he's gonna going, go, he, go to Louisiana. He was last seen headed to Louisiana. I don't know if he's going uh, to the gambling boats or he's gonna let's try go something better. Let's go, Beto. Gonna go out there with a crawdad scene. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's a professional campaigner, not a professional politician. I because you would need to you need so to win some of those here's, elections. Here's my thing with that. 
There is nobody, nobody that makes enough money as a civil servant to campaign for essentially almost three full full years. Well, you got to think about it. So I mean, we're way past our time, but you got to think about it in these terms. You've got all the campaign boosters. You got uh-huh. the people who donate uh-huh. their money, yeah. uh-huh. uh, and then yeah. on the left, you got the George mm-hmm. Soros guys that everybody mm-hmm. says is out there, you know, mm-hmm. r- ruling yeah. the world kind of thing. You know, doing mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's true. That's true. Um, it is true. But yeah. you know, and then mm-hmm. there's the you got to take a little bit off the big guy. Ah, ten percent. You get the ten percent guys go to the big guy, and then there's there's your corrupt fund uh, <laughs> that's in the Cayman <laughs> somewhere. That you hide your money. Whiskey and wine does not condone <laughs> hiding any of your money in offshore accounts. All politicians, the, the highest ranking politician our government makes, what, $400,000 a year or something like what is the president? I don't know what he makes. But they're all freaking millionaires, but none of them were millionaires before they were elected. Come on, man. Well, that sounds like you're trying to insinuate that they do insider trading and stuff like that, which they wrote into law that they can't do because of their security clearances. So... I'm no. They wrote it in law that they can do it. No, they can't be held against them. Yes, yeah, yeah, they yeah, can't yeah, be prosecuted. Yeah, it's yeah. not insider trading if you use your national security yeah. clearance. For, so, uh, so I, I am going to sit here on the opposite side of the table for you, or from you, and I'm just going to to say that uh, you are dead wrong, sir. Hmm. There, you're, hmm. you're. I think most of America would agree with me that they're why, all corrupt. Why are there red dots coming through the window? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I don't know if Beto's got that kind of pull. <laughs> All right. So what do y'all think about those lead slingers? I like it. It's it's really, really good. I I, I like it. I mean it's congratulations. You can't to, go wrong. There's nothing there's no. I, I'm I'm gonna be really curious how the go backs are yeah. though. The only I mean, if I have any um cr- real critique of it, uh, is it's got that beautiful, sweet bourbon esque flavor. But it's got that burn on the back end. It hits you is, about right here. Yeah, and that's typically a little yeah. bit more reminiscence of our more of the lower end it, they, kind of it stuff. It is, yeah. So, um, that's my only critique is you know that it's got it's got that afterburn effect that yeah. we're going to get later. You know, the heartburn that we're going to yeah. get later from it. So, well, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead yeah. and get our cluckage clinkage on in the seventeen seventy six oldest bourbon, in oldest bourbon Kentucky. in Kentucky. I'm, I'm excited. Oh, 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 that's uh, that went up my nose. That went straight into my sinuses. Oh, that tastes. Oh, that that's a burn. That tasted really good at first. And then all of a sudden it hit my sinuses. And so it's. Yeah, I was wondering what he was feeling. That delayed burn is even more delayed than the lead slinger. Mm -hmm. But the burn is twice but it hits me like in my chest it doesn't even hit me in yeah my i mean it, i swear it's it shot straight into my sinuses what, in my what, brain what's the price range of these things again they're about 25 bucks each yeah, oh, so okay. they're mid-range yeah so, so yeah um all right well you know what let's go ahead and get i'm gonna the say our founding fathers they uh they knew they what they like a little they drinky <laughs> they knew well did you ever see the receipt for because they they preserved the receipt from uh the signing of the constitution did you, did you ever see that uh-uh. um Ooh, I am still feeling that yeah. burn, dude. Yeah. That is, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> um, I'm seeing if I can pull it up right quick. Um, I'm getting the the salivation from it a little. Yeah, bit this too. is uh, this is. I think with, that's that's not a good, rot uh, gut taste, but I have a feeling it's uh, eating my insides. Dump a coke into that one, I tell you. Yeah. Um, but it so, is a hundred proof. So. Hmm. You got to take that so, into consideration. We're doing eighty proof versus one hundred proof. So not the, high the enough bill, to lose vision. So yeah. now, now keep in mind Yet. that there were only a few people at this party, but whenever the Revolutionary War was over and everything, uh, it was fifty-four bottles of Madeira, sixty bottles of Claret, eight bottles of whiskey, twenty-two bottles of porter, eight of hard cider, twelve bottles of beer, and seven bowls of alcoholic punch. Um, and there, and there were, and, the, and this is why we ended up in a revolution. There, 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 there were only, we can take them. Let's do it. There were only, so this, no, so this was after the revolution. There were oh. only 55 people in attendance for that, for in, 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 in today's world, 
just that amount of alcohol would be about 15k i wonder how much of those were angry drunks at each other uh, i don't you know hancock <laughs> You You're such like, a damn so off. Yeah, to just take that quill and you just, you just put your John Hancock all over. You just over. took him a whole bit. You didn't think about nobody else, did you? <laughs> I'm, you jackass. I, I was, I was signing number twenty, so I had to like sign really small. You can't even see it, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna take, this, I'm gonna take another sip of this, and then let's get into topic number two. All or, right. It's a more fun topic. Is it? <sighs> Is it really more fun? It is a little more fun. Okay. All right. So topic number two. It's Veterans Day. Yeah. Well. Armistice Day. Yeah, tomorrow's Veterans Day. <clears throat> well, yeah, tomorrow is. But, um, and the, and we talked briefly before about uh, Veterans Day, how it was technically Armistice Day, where that it was supposed to be the end of all wars. It was supposed to be the end of the war to end all wars. And it was signed at the 11th hour, or it went into effect at the 11th da- hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. <clears throat> and then, it, so it was the armistice of World War One, and then it turned into the uh, War of All Wars. The, the uh, war. then it turned into Veterans Day. <clears throat> so it's because it's weird. It's the wars didn't stop after. I, know, after that. I, don't, I don't know what happened. The second one was the al- worst. <laughs> it was almost like there was just like this, you know, like this, like this rearming period. And then they said, "Hey, we want to try out some new weapons. Can we start another World War? No. Yeah. Can we start just a little bit of a World War? No. Well, it's because but we they, got these really cool new weapons. It's because, like, we talked about all the alcohol. <sighs> okay, the, fine. You can start one. Talked about all the alcohol of our founding fathers. That you know, after Armistice, there was probably a lot of schnapps in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Those so, guys got so, a little angry. <laughs> you know, let's let's make this a little bit more fun. Um, so I'm going to go. Ahead, I'm going to go ahead and start the timer now. What are your favorite war movies? So, uh, my favorite war movies, probably my top three, uh, and they're going to be more modern ones. I know that's going to disappoint some people because there are a lot of great John Wayne ones. And stuff oh, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my top three are going to be probably, uh, my favorite one is Saving Private Ryan. Yep, Saving Private Ryan. Uh, I've got more than three. That one I actually saw in the theater. I'm going to tell you right now, I mean, it, it brought me to the verge of welling up just watching that American flag with the D-Day thing and yeah. all that stuff. I mean, that was just... To know the greatest generation to know that they saw hell like we've never like we seen never hell experience that we've yeah. never seen before um you know it, it's it's moving not so much the story but just knowing what these guys had yeah. to go through uh that movie made you feel it yeah uh, on that, that so that on, that, on that same note one of the ones that that i feel the same way about and it's more modern was sniper with chris with chris kyle oh yeah that was yeah the american sniper story that yeah. was that was a great one uh, my number two would be uh, Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, that's that's one of mine. <clears throat> uh, and just because of the whole, it's two movies in one. I mean, it's like yeah. going to a double feature. <laughs> uh, you get this great, and anybody who's ever been to boot camp or basic training, uh, unless maybe you're in the Coast Guard, I don't know if it's like that at all. Uh, but it could be. I don't know. I don't know what they do with their with their demerits and their their their, their chets and the things like that that they do on, on their punishments. But, and, but the cool thing about... Full Metal Jacket, the one that one of the things I've always thought was really cool. Originally, it was not Arlie Ermey that was supposed to be the drill instructor. No, he was actually he was just an advisor, a military advisor to because he was a former and, DI. And they didn't like whenever he was giving him advice. One of the first scenes that you see him actually come in, <clears throat> they didn't even know that the they didn't tell him that the cameras weren't rolling, and he actually scared the guys yeah. like Matthew Modine and all those guys. Yeah. Um, because they weren't expecting that. Well, then because of the reaction, they fired the guy that he was supposed to be advising. And then they gave him the script. And he was like, we would never say this. And they just said, okay, well, then just ad lib. And he well, did. what would you say? <laughs> yeah. Well, let me show you what I would say. Now, there is one that is about World War One, and it's, it's very much more modern. Um, but it's based off of a book that was originally a part of the banned book list in Germany. And that is called All's Quiet on the Western yes, Front. Yes, I've seen it. And it's it's new on Netflix. Um, and there's been multiple adaptations of it, but the, the newest one is on Netflix. I have not seen the newest one, but it's, I've seen one of the older ones. I think it's, it was like it's, it's uh, 50s one or One of the things that is really telling about it is the fact that it's actually from the perspective of a German soldier. That's a little different. Um, from World War One. Yeah, because I know like um, Flags of Our Fathers is not on my list, by the way. That Flags of Our Fathers is on my list. And so, not, is, and so is Band of Brothers. It, yeah, it's not the flag. Well, Band of Brothers is more of a mini series, but yeah, Band of Brothers yeah. is absolutely out there. Uh, but Flags of Our Fathers, that one, you know, it would try to give you 
um, because there was another one. That he, uh, I think he did the sequel where he tried to show it from the the Japanese point, you know, yeah. kind of point of view. And to me, that one kind of fell flat. Flags for Fallout was good, but uh, my third one though is it, it's not World War Two. It's not the Greatest Generation, uh, but it was the greatest abused generation of soldiers, uh, which is we were soldiers. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. No, it's funny that you mentioned that because I, I have that on my list too. Yeah. But I forgot that it was called we were soldiers because i read the book first so i yeah. i wrote down we were soldiers well, it's about the colonel i mean it was seven well, cab the, the 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 original title for the book was we were soldiers once and young ah. and that's what i had written down but the, yeah to me we were soldiers really captured the whole idea of and they that, brought back the cab that and, whole air cavalry thing that had never yeah. d- been done before and the fact that they choose they chose to give that colonel uh when he created that unit or when he, when that unit was being created to give it the, that seventh cavalry designation, <laughs> which was Custer's yeah. unit, and send them and, in there. I mean that, and that, and that was a, and that was a great movie. Yeah. Uh, nowhere near as historically accurate. No. Um, one, one of my favorite movies is also Heartbreak Ridge. Well, that was a great one. That, just being about Grenada was a little weird. And fun history yeah. about Heartbreak Ridge is, believe it or not, that story was actually written about the United States Army, and it was supposed to be about the 82nd Airborne. Um, and then they going switched into Grenada. It, yeah. uh, what well, actually didn't switch it. What happened was the Pentagon came back and said, "We're not comfortable yeah. with a movie depicting soldiers as these brash, cursing." And then the Marines said, we'll take it. You know, miscreants just, just, just of, it you over. Know, into killing people and stuff like that. And the Marine Corps is like, that, well, heck. We do. We do, we'll that do seven, we do that seven days a week. And then uh, I know that our time is almost up. Hold on. And yeah. our timer's up. But I'm going to throw this one in there, too. Um, and it's another Mel Gibson movie, The Patriot. Oh, The Patriot. That's the best independence film uh um, probably ever made. have you ever seen the patriot no i it, have not it's basically um mel gibson's character used to be with the the british army and he was like known as like this bad clucking yeah he fought the Jama. french indian wars and he was yeah. just brutal <clears throat> and um his son enlist into the revolution the the colonial army gets killed well then he and then they burn his house down and he decides he's going to go all out. And he basically just puts this ragtag group of guerrilla warfare yeah. hmm. guys together. It, it, it's obviously it's fictional, uh, but it, it, <clears throat> it brings home the point that in the Revolutionary War, it was what brutal. won the war was not standing in fields no, it going toe to toe with yeah. redcoats on their own style of fighting. It, it, it was. It, it changed it where that it was a bunch of these squirrel and deer hunters. Yeah. That they were using put on cover, your bucks, yeah. They were using cover and camouflage. Yeah. Put to, on your buckskins, yeah. blend in the environment, and pick off the officers. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Um, now, real quick before y'all jump on, did y'all ever see Fury? Yes. Yes. So that's, that's obviously, a, I was a tanker, but I was not a tanker in World War Two. Um, Fury really captured um, how brutal it is to live and die in a tank because mm-hmm. it's not like. You're getting shot with small arms and you're looking you're at getting, your buddy saying, tell my wife I loved her kind of thing. It's like, no, uh, they find your ear over here. Uh, they yeah. find a toe. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a horrible oh, you know, way to there's die. A, there's, another movie that, <laughs> that um, like a- there's another movie that should be on this list, um, and that's uh, The Hurt Locker. Yeah, The Hurt Locker, that was, that was a different kind of movie. I mean, it, it was different, but it showed like some of the – the psychological effects yeah of you it know, wasn't like war war but it showed some of the psychological it, it showed the, to me the real true psychological effect, not just the the, the bomb detonation that the, obviously jeremy renner's character was playing uh, on that one uh but really just kind of the whole idea of we're, we're in this quagmire in baghdad of yeah. being this police force <clears throat> when they're soldiers they're not so your soldiers yeah. who are trying to do police officer jobs well that was the same problem we had in vietnam yeah is okay well let's go take this hill let's take these villages and then let's hand it back but in iraq obviously we didn't give it back we stayed in baghdad we well no door if, you to remember, door if you remember and, in iraq we tried to give it back 
and they brought in the UN forces and we started yeah. to do the pull out because the UN were supposed well, to be the police whole, forces. Then they had that whole but green zone thing. But the you know. UN forces, the UN oh, yeah. forces, we're getting told we're, we're way over our time uh, here. So the UN Disney forces were job. taking too many losses. So, well, but anyway, yeah, yeah I had the morals those. for you guys there. Yeah, cause, cause, uh, sorry, those sissy little blue <laughs> well, no, we, we like, we, we, hey, we like our war movies. We like our yeah. war movies. Oh, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of great war movies out there. Band of Brothers, Platoon. Well, Band, yeah. Band of Brothers, though. Okay, we're getting yeah. told to stop. Okay. <laughs> That's the so, so what do y'all think about the series. 1776? I like it, but it's, I don't know if it's the hunter proof or it's the recipe. That burn on the that, back end. And it goes all it, the way down. Yeah, it it really, really kicks in. And I, this, if you, a night of drinking with this, I promise you, you're going to be taking Zantac and Pepsid and all kinds yeah. of stuff. It does taste good, but yeah. It, but the, yeah, that uh, initial taste is amazing, but that afterburn. That, yeah. They could actually mix the smoothness of the lead Well, I almost wonder if they took it down to 80 proof. If it'd be a little bit more smooth, if, yeah. If that would, if that would mellow it out a little bit more. I'll tell you what, let's do our first go back. So I guess I'm just a wuss compared to our founding <laughs> fathers when it comes to the burn here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's do our first go back from the 1776. Yeah, that initial taste is amazing. And then three. But then you wait. Two, one. There it is. Yeah, five seconds in and you want to, you are you could be in a carny. You could be one of those carny guys shooting fire. Yeah. So here, here we comes. We should try this. Here comes the, yeah, the lead slingers. You give it a try. Oh, that's just, that's good. It's lighter in the flavor. But also lighter in the back end berm, so it's <clears throat> it's way more mellow. I will say I will say this about the uh, lead slingers for sure that it doesn't leave me prickly on the <laughs> inside. Well, it's almost like the lead slinger is telling you, you know, hey soldier, you did good today. Good it's okay. di- you did good today. You can drink a lot and, of me. And the seventeen seventy six is like, hey soldier, <laughs> you want to get clucked up? <laughs> All right. Oh, speaking of clucked up. Guess what time it is? Time, ah, time for our favorite segment. Yeah. The, the big FUs. FUs. Stands for follow up. No, it, it does. Absolutely, it does. absolutely 100% does not. Does not. But because this is now twice in a row that the morals hasn't been here to tell us. Yeah. Yes, it does. No, we can attest because we started the show. It 100% does not. I, I just got a text from morals oh. and, uh, I ignored it. She I said uh, that, so. it, it means follow up. No, oh. it doesn't. <laughs> she still gets her. Still gets <laughs> How did she know we were in know? this segment already? Like she could just is, sense it. I don't know. Uh, anyways. So, <laughs> right. um, so uh, the, one of the first big follow ups. <laughs> uh, Elon, Elon, Musk, Elon Musk. The deal went through. He, yeah, he, he's <laughs> in control of Twitter. Fired the CEO. Figured out how not to pay him his big golden parachute that was written into the contract or whatever. And Man. that guy ain't getting a dime from what I saw. The, and, w- and what's really kind of cool is that, you know, all those ex-Twitter employees, yeah. <clears throat> they well, kind of helped get him there because they were promoting Tesla so much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, that's I mean, one but, of those things that but you, you know. But, you know, worst case scenario, they can help bring back the American automobile industry if yeah. they want to go, you know, be roughneckers out, out in yeah. the, let me, let me in tell the you oil fields. how I feel about the Twitter deal. Um, how do you, how does that make you feel? I don't Rooster? use Twitter. Uh, I've have a Twitter account. I haven't used it in two years. Uh, I I think it's the worst social media platform. The I world. still don't understand the core concept. I don't understand Twitter. it. It's just a bunch of people being you know jackasses to each other and just. Hey, do I need to remind you this is a PG thirteen show? Okay, so. uh, jackholes Jack to each bombs. other, kind of a thing. Yeah, I hope Elon Musk. You know, can clean it up. I know he fired a whole bunch of the <clears throat> fact checkers, but not all of them. Just some of them. The ones that were actually not checking the facts and they were just doing it off how they felt? Probably. Yeah, he let them go. <clears throat> and I know that I will say this is my emails from Twitter have gone up 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, hey, man, you know, Elon, I'm glad you got it. I, 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 but I'm not. I'm probably um, not going to come back to um, Twitter. Probably not I don't, coming back. I don't really quit. I keep, it, I keep mine just because it, occasionally my ban gets lifted so I can go back and I can comment to some of my favorite politicians. But, see, I, my, oh, but speaking of favorite politicians. Oh. Where, where in, in the, the world, world is Kamala Harris? Harris? Well, do you know where she's at, Madman? She is at the border. 
of DC. Uh, Virginia, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Virginia and Maryland. It's amazing, it's amazing our border czar has yeah. not actually been at the border that's, since that's I mean, true. June like, 26th. Like of, having to do uh, your, it's, it's like having to do your yeah. job or something. It's just it's, ah. it's not it's not going to happen. I will uh, say this though. Don't. Yeah, um I I <laughs> just shared shared a funny meme with me today and we I, we will have to 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 show it on a non PG13 platform yeah. because that was freaking funny. But I will say this. Mashable don't come. videos. <laughs> don't come. Three minutes in. Yeah. Yeah. And Trump for the win. <laughs> Trump for the win. <laughs> so, um, oh, sp- uh, yeah. You know, so, and, DC. Yeah. So, she so was speaking at the DNC. Yeah. yeah. She's at the DNC. Um, maybe she was by the door, which is like a border of the, the next conference room. center. I don't know. Uh, uh, but yeah, so she gave a speech. Uh, and remember, Biden said democracy. This, this democracy is at stake. Democracy is being threatened by this midterm election. Oh, yeah. He said threatened. so. So Biden said it was that democracy was being threatened. Yeah. Well, she, she was the one that said democracy. Well, she is reassured at stake. us it's not. It's fine now. Uh, it's yeah. fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. It's fine. 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 It's fine. Like the fire dog. It's fine. This is fine. Uh, but yeah, so she say, actually stated uh, that democracy is intact. Of course. Democracy is intact. is intact. Don't come. Don't come. Don't come. Don't, don't come. Don't come, you self. <laughs> I'm coming, Trump. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, speak because uh, Jizzo brought up Trump. Did you see that? Because uh, I was going to bring this up as a, the follow ups too. Um, that because Florida actually did their own election police force, they required the mail in, they required uh, in person voting only with ID. And amazingly, you know, all of their stuff was done the same day. And DeSantis, even though that he only got over 80% of the Latino voters, he still won 60 to 40 hmm. over Chris. That's that's really weird. It's really weird. It's it really weird. weird. But that's yeah. a follow-up because of DeSantis. Yeah. And, yeah. and then because Trump came out today and <clears throat> was blasting him, it's almost like Trump's going to try to run for t- president again or something. because yes, he knows DeSantis <laughs> is a big threat. Abbott's no threat at no. running for president. He'll probably run for president, uh, but it's it's not going to happen. No, uh, no one's going to vote for him. No, uh, but DeSantis, in my opinion, a DeSantis Trump in the primary, it's going to go to DeSantis. Uh, because, Hopefully. Well, I mean, I know, like, I I have no problem sharing my political opinions with people. It, it doesn't make people happy sometimes, but I think we should be able to talk about our political opinion and notice that there are differences and still be calm about it. Uh, and not be a bunch it, of jackholes. It's, it's almost like you know you could be adults. freedom of thought. I mean, freedom of speech. It's, so here's the, here's the, be- here's the beautiful things. thing about that whole freedom of speech thing is mm. that you know that we could sit here and have different opinions, and it's not going to change the taste of this whiskey. It doesn't. It doesn't. But so like you know, and I, so just so you know, you kids listening out there, and you're ready to start voting. Um, the rooster's opinion on voting for president of the United States, specifically commander in chief. I don't really feel comfortable voting for anybody who never served their country. He didn't serve any uniform. Uh, I I would rather vote for the guy who, or gal who did uh, serve. So, so you want to know the madman's opinion? Yeah. We need a libertarian that takes the best of the left and the oh, best yeah. of the right and say, cluck the two parties. I'm kind of hoping that this <clears throat> Tulsi Gabbard chick who used to be in the Republican, oh, the one or that, sorry, the Democrat yeah. party, I'm kind of hoping she doesn't runs join libertarian? the GOP that she runs and she actually jumps, jumps into the libertarian because unfortunately the libertarian party is not filled with any strong candidates. No. They just don't and, pick and strong people. What's funny is that if you, if you look at a lot of their beliefs, they take a lot of the best of the left. They take a lot of the best of the right. And if anybody would do their research, they'd be like, Hey, this is a great candidate. Yeah. But they always but throw something crazy in there that yeah. you're just like, I can't hang with that. Yeah, I uh, like the the um, the last president who uh, presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party. I watched her stuff. She wasn't inv- invited to the debate, so you know I watched her videos and she did her thing. And I was like, you know, when she's hitting her points, and I'm like, hey, you know what? I support that. Yeah, you know what? I support that. And then she hit that point. Anybody in prison for any type of drug offense is going to get a presidential pardon. And I'm like, I'm out. Yep, I'm out. <laughs> and now I'm out. 
because because uh, you you just can't let everybody out. Yeah. It's, some of these people are really bad. They're bad. They're, bad. they're like corn pop. They're yeah. really bad, bad dudes. dudes. Uh, oh, but you know what? We should forgive them. And, ju- and that leads us into the last follow up. Oh, the student loan forgiveness. So you know, Biden's gonna forgive all those student loans. Well, some well. Of them. Some of them. Uh, some of them. Because but it, it's turned into the jerk where it's like, you know, I don't need, you know, except between here and here yeah. if you win the prize kind of thing. And yeah. So the, and the needle keeps moving on it. But, and, and, but you know, he, he campaigned on this. Yeah. But I don't know if you saw this. Oh, I saw. The, the SCOTUS said, yeah. no, you yeah. can't, you can't The needle's that. off the record now, dude. It's just, just we're done playing the band now, and we're done. That being said. He can't do it by executive action. Correct. It's, it's got to go back through the it, House and the Senate and loan become legislated. In the executive action itself is illegal. Yes. The President of the United States, even with executive power, just can't say, I'm forgiving so many people's yeah. loans and I'm going to start writing checks. Yeah. It doesn't work that way because, honestly, if you think about it, he's buying your vote. That's exactly what it is. But if they if they redo it and they go through the House and Senate and make it where that it's a leg- yeah. go, it goes through proper legislation, yeah. any politician know. who's going to give you money, it's is almost like a bribe. It's, it's like a bribe. bribe. It is. But yeah, you just and that to me, I don't agree with any executive actions for the most part because they they should be for time, time of, of war. war. Uh, and instead, it's just like a reason to <laughs> oh, bypass timer, legislation. Timer, 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 timer. And that goes for the GOP too. I don't like it when they use it either. Well, to be honest with you, I think that we need to do like a little bit of a revamp because just because of checks and balances, I don't think that any one party. Should, we need a good, should, strong third party. <clears throat> I don't think that any party should control all three branches. No, well, I think any good, strong third party puts the fear into the other two parties of maybe I can't be as corrupt because there's this third option out there. Because right now you know, with a two party system, of it's like, oh, well, which do I want? Do I want the the turd on a hot dog bun, or do I want the turd sandwich and a hamburger bun? Because either way, I'm getting a turd sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of a uh, little corrupt here, let's go back from the lead slingers oh, over yeah. to the 1776. I've been sipping this lead slinger; it's growing on me. <sighs> it's definitely a sipping bourbon. Got to wait the five seconds. I, I believe they're all intended to be a sipping bourbon. Oh, Did, that's false. That's so. That's that's false. Uh, I, that's a partially false statement, according to the fact checkers for whiskey and wine with Bruce and the Madman. Some Find me a are, bottle that says this is great for chugging. That is not a four loco. Well, apparently, <laughs> apparently, you have never spent an entire evening from sundown to sun up. Behind a laundry service facility <laughs> at in a Fort Hood, <laughs> or a Seven Eleven for that yeah. matter, drinking Jim Beam and Gatorade so you don't dehydrate. <laughs> okay, I've 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 got I've I've got mine. I, I've only passed out by the dumpster. I mean, it's I'm not saying I haven't. Hey man, twenty bucks I'm is twenty bucks. I'm just saying their intent <sighs> is on this. All right, end. I'm ready. All right, I, I'm ready. Jizzle, you ready? Let's let Jizzle go first. I'm ready. Let's, let's, you're going to go first. You're, 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 you're the special So my, MC. my winner is the Lead Slinger. Uh, for obvious reasons already discussed, it is much smoother and easy on the throat and giggity. stomach. Giggity. <laughs> giggity is correct. Um, I do like the flavor in the uh, old 1776. Yeah. But, man, that burn, it, you almost need an antibiotic for it. <laughs> Oh, things that burn. <laughs> I'll take things that burn on naval ships for 400, Alex. You have to use the red toilet seat on the ship. <laughs> and for those of you who do know that, we can be friends. <laughs> All right, what you but got, I'll never share the toilet seat. What you got, Rooster? Uh, as much as it pains me, and the reason I say it much pains me, I really, really wanted to say 1776 was the better one, but I'm going Lead Slinger. <clears throat> um I'm I'm right there with you on both. The the lead slingers is just so much smoother. And it's and it's got a little bit of a different taste. That that last go back but sealed it. The last go back sealed it. The 1776, I don't think is bad. No, it's a good it's, bourbon. It's, it's great. It 
it's got a great flavor. But I'm it's got a great Zantac smell. Tonight. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'd be willing to bet that if, you know, you mix this with like a little bit of something, even if it's just like maybe like ice to as it as it sets and, you know, like kind of like the old school it. whiskey with the dab of water. In yeah, it. I don't I, agree with it, but yeah. I know a lot of old timers I, do it. I, I think that it would be good. But for just with what we got right here, You're I right. I I think that. Well, I, thinking, le- I think that the less lingers yeah, is one. I'm thinking Jizzo is probably right. This is this is the style of bourbon that you would have cut with water back then because they didn't have the ice and the refrigeration kind Quite of Quite possibly, thing. yeah. So they probably were used to cutting it with, you know, water and, you know, tonic and other things like that. Uh, but it's it's just that back end burn. Yeah, it's, the that's old, the, it's way more flavorful. I mean, oh, it's yeah. got a better flavor. Yeah, absolutely. But full body from start to finish, lead slinger is not going to let it's not going to change on you the from from start to finish the lead slinger just doesn't leave you prickly on the insides <laughs> yeah that was on front to back i mean so 1776 you never go front to back <laughs> you, never, you, never no, back you, never, to you never go back to front you never go back to front and then you know let's slinger. You, you i mean do, you kind of do what you want <laughs> how you feel it <laughs> 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 so uh so yeah so i think that it, i think they were all unanimous that is the lead slingers. yeah and I, you know it's weird i'm disappointed uh because i really really wanted the 1776 being the oldest distillery in kentucky and having this really cool bottle this really cool label being something our forefathers but you know that drank. Be, but that being said we're comparing these side by side you cannot go wrong with either one of them no no if you only had one you're gonna be happy but i'm gonna tell you right but I'd now i'd be willing to bet too that if you took that 1776 and probably took jizzo's advice and you know just a dab of water and you had a, a nice cigar or a pipe or something oh yeah that they would just be absolutely phenomenal i feel like it's a pipe bourbon not this, a cigar bourbon it, it quite possibly is yeah, a, a long stem pipe oh little, yeah a little yeah. hint of a cherry flavor in yeah. the in pipe yeah i think you're good yeah. to go Oh, I'm pretty sure that as much as that burns, that there's probably going to be some cherries that were, were coming up. For so, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> the good news <laughs> is... You, uh, you know, and we talked about veteran stuff. The way this burns, uh, this is like uh, Panamanian jungle school. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as we're wrapping up, a quick shout out. Um, um, thanks to all the veterans and thanks to all you, you devil dogs that are out there. Um, I know that right now, especially... Um, with some of the, the bills that are being introduced and things like that, that it's almost like it's, um, it's almost like it's, I want to say, I want to say shunned, but that's probably not the right word. Well, to put it in context, uh, this administration, the Biden administration, I'm going to call them out, uh, through the Pentagon or has asked the Pentagon. So rather than figuring out how to give our soldiers, uh, more pay, um, they basically took a playbook out of when I was in the military and the Clinton administration uh, and said, hey, let's remind all our soldiers and their families that they can be on welfare. Yeah. That is not but, how you treat your active well, duty you know, I, would, I wasn't even talking about that, but I was just talking about like how, you know, the bill came out and that they were from Project Veritas so that it got leaked and yet like anybody as a veteran is now considered an extremist and all this other stuff. Oh, that was the Homeland Security. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, we, we covered that before. Yeah. yeah so. but, but, but I was referring to that. Yeah. But um, I mean, that's no different than the Obama administration. That was the first Homeland Security so memo he put out was, you know, completely, look out for. completely different topic. And in, I don't know what you have going on the Saturday after Thanksgiving, but that is 1126. And there is going to be an amazing show at trees that's going to feature panic device, perceived, black tie vendetta, inner core, and from then on. Oh, trees, the venue. Not, yeah, trees, trees, not the, the venue. tree, the overlord. Always no, deep no, elm. No. Always, to be specific. He, he, he sits um, in when he watches people. No, not that Not that tree. <laughs> okay. um, but I, I was talking to uh, to Bradley Amos, who, you know, we air, yeah. we air on his, his oh, station. Oh, it's DDR. And uh, he, he's, he's going to be there at the show. So for, be good. for any of you deep Dallas radio listeners, for any of the locked and loaded listeners, come out to the show on eleven twenty six. We're going to be there, and uh, so are the uh, deep Dallas radio guys. Yeah, and odds are you're going to get to meet Rooster and the Madman, Rooster and the and Jizzo and Jizzo and Jizzo and Morals and Morals should be there morals too. Might be yeah, there. Morals, no, morals most likely should be there. She'll probably yeah. be there. She'll yeah. probably be there. And DJ Guns maybe, will probably maybe the maybe Overlord will be there himself. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We can make, we can set up a makeshift dungeon. In now that. we usually have to just. And if you do show up, um, don't be too upset. 
Um, but the overlord always has to be roped off <laughs> away from everybody else. Especially it's, school it's, zones and Chuck E. Cheese's. Yeah, it's for your safety. <laughs> All right, Collectheads, you've been listening to episode 69 of wow. Whiskey and Wine with the Rooster and the Madman with our special guest, Jizzo. Jizzo. And remember, hey. in a world full of chickens, be a rooster. You're listening to Whiskey and Wine. Thanks for tuning in to Whiskey and Wine with the Rooster and the Madman, where you can catch brand new episodes every Saturday at 4 p.m. on Deep Dallas Radio on Locked and Loaded with DJ Shane Gunn. Special thanks to our sponsor, GiftedChicken.com, home to all your beard, bath, and body care needs. Veteran owner operator right here in North Texas. Remember to pick up a bottle of Overlord Dungeon Oil. It's 100% all-natural coconut oil. Leaves are prickly on the insides.